Hey guys, Tyler here. While it's no surprise I am in fact an atheist, the vast majority of my videos that I do on my channel are largely related to social justice topics as well as tokusetsu, Godzilla, interviews from Spain and Latin America, and other various topics that I find very interesting. However, for this particular video, I decided to respond to a video that was done by Prager University by Dennis Prager himself talking about the possibility of an afterlife. When I watched the video, and yes, I watched the video with a very open mind, I just could not help but notice that there were various flaws throughout Mr. Dennis Prager's arguments and I figured I would respond to the flaws that I saw in this original video. I will not resort to insults or personal attacks against religion, just the arguments themselves that I saw that were problematic in the video. So, let us begin. Is there an afterlife? Life after this life ends? There probably isn't a human being who hasn't asked this question at one time or another. And here's the answer. If there is a God, there is an afterlife. It's that simple. And here's why. First, this life is filled with an immeasurable amount of injustice and suffering. The only way there can be some ultimate justice for victims of evil is if there is an afterlife. And the only way comfort is available to those who suffer unjustly, from painful disease and premature death to the death of a child, is if there is an afterlife. But such an afterlife exists only if there is a good and just God. A good and just God provides a way to compensate for all the unjust suffering in this world. Mr. Prager, you have various problems in this argumentation. The first problem is that you claim that the afterlife exists for people who suffer unjustly in this life on earth. However, what about people like me? According to the Bible, it claims that people like me, people who are atheists or skeptics, were destined to go to hell for not believing in your God. Not only are people like me destined to hell, but according to Psalms, it says that people like me who doubt the claims in the Bible and doubt God are complete fools. Tell me this, how is it fair, how is it just, to send an innocent person who does not believe in your God straight to hell for the simple act of not believing in a God. Let's say, for example, the person did not steal, he did not rape anybody, he was a decent citizen. How is your God fair and just for putting people like me in hell just for not believing in it, even though I've never done anything wrong. Not only does it say that people like me who are atheists will suffer forever for all eternity in hell, but it also says that homosexuals, for simply being homosexual, will also suffer underneath hellfire, as well as people who commit suicide. Also, how is it fair and how is it just for there to be a divine loophole? According to Catholicism, my old denomination, basically there are three afterlives. There's heaven, there's hell, and there's purgatory. If a person, for example, was sincere about their apology to God, they can go to purgatory to be judged to go to heaven or hell. So if a person was a bad guy, let's say as bad as Hitler, he might have a chance of going to heaven if he sincerely asked for forgiveness for God. Again, how is it fair, how is it just, for people to find loopholes to go to heaven to not burn for all eternity? Like, wouldn't the people who were sincerely good that went to heaven suffer even more for having people who are bad, who find a loophole to just, you know, torment them forever? Second, since God is not physical, the physical world is not the only reality. If God is not physical, and we cannot test God to see whether or not God exists or not, how can you then possibly say that there are other worlds outside of the physical world if we cannot test God or cannot test the afterlife to prove that God exists? Look, I'm not trying to say that the physical world is the end-all be-all evidence to show that the physical world only exists. However, there is more proof 
that there's a physical world mostly because we test and absorb and experiment on the physical world and we cannot test, absorb, or experiment on supernatural ideas because supernatural ideas require faith and personal belief. Now, of course, those who doubt God's existence have every reason to doubt an afterlife. But if you believe in a good God, then you have to believe there's an afterlife. That's not really uh, true. There are a group of people that call themselves deists who believe that a God just created the universe and just left it at that. However, they're not obligated to believe that an afterlife exists or not exists. Just because somebody believes in a God does not mean that they're obligated to believe in an afterlife. If you say you believe in God but not in an afterlife, the God you believe in is not only not good, that God is cruel. That God made a world filled with unjust suffering and just left it at that. Compared to what? The biblical God? If we were to take the Bible to be true, which by the way, I do not take the Bible to be true at all. I don't take any kind of holy text to be true. But let's say that the Bible is true. That means that God may all the people underneath them suffer one way or another. For example, Noah's Ark, essentially God got really pissed off and decided to flood the entire earth just because he was pissed off. He killed women, he killed children, he killed men, he killed babies, all because he was upset at humanity before he decided to stop the flood during Noah's Ark. Also, what about the story of Abraham? What happened, if I remember correctly, was that Abraham was told by God to go after to stab his son, and at the very last minute, God told him not to stab his son to prove his faith towards himself. One final example is the story of Adam and Eve in Genesis. What happened was that Adam and Eve was created by God, and God told him not to go to the tree of knowledge However, Eve was tricked by the snake or the devil to get the apple from the tree of knowledge and Eve gave the apple to Adam to eat. However, as a result of Adam and Eve eating the apple, both Adam and Eve suffer and the whole entire humanity suffer because of their actions. Thanks to the actions of Adam and Eve, women are now experiencing pain during childbirth is that fair and is that justified? Also, what about the power of prayer? What if somebody, for example, asks God not to have some suffering in the world, but suffering so happens in the world? Does it not mean that God is also inattentive to people's cries for suffering in the world? If there's no afterlife, we don't live on. Period. Let's be honest enough to acknowledge that. If there's no afterlife, None of us will ever again be with those we most love and who love us. If there's no afterlife, neither anyone murdered nor any murderer will ever receive ultimate justice. If there's no afterlife, this life, for the vast majority of people who ever lived and for those alive now, is a meaningless crapshoot. My personal views on the afterlife is that I personally have no idea whether an afterlife exists or not. But according to the science, what happens is that when our brains basically turn off during our death, essentially all the parts in our body turns off with it, allowing us to die and not be conscious because our brain is also dying. However, during this whole entire process where people are dying, there are people in various countries that also have visions of their various afterlives. For example, if somebody was to be born in the United States or in European countries, they're more likely to be Christian and therefore more likely to believe in heaven. And if somebody were to be born in an Asian country, they're more likely to be Buddhist or maybe like uh, Shinto or what have you. When we're dying, you can say, that our memory just flash before our eyes. And because our memory just flash before our eyes, 
are various concepts of afterlife flash before our eyes. If somebody was to be born in Asia was a Buddhist, they're probably envisioning themselves being reincarnated into something else. And if a Christian is dying and is having like the flashback before his eyes, he is more likely to envision like um, heaven. So I think depending on where you live, essentially what affects, affects your memory when you're dying is by the culture that you're dominated in and also how you live your life. As far as your claim that people who don't believe in the afterlife have meaningless lives, I personally disagree with that statement. And the main reason why I disagree is because meaning in your life can be defined by many different things. Spending time with your family, spending time with your friends, your job, what you do in the morning, what you do in the afternoon, your activities, all these stuff in life makes life much more precious and much more happy and you have to make meaning in your life in order to be a happy person. Because people believe that there's one shot in life, that means that whatever they do in their life have that much more meaning because they know that what they do is their one shot in life and that's the best shot that they have in this life to make something good of themselves. Whereas if a religious person have some sort of belief in the afterlife, essentially they're saying that they are looking forward to dying to see their maker rather than to make your life actually happier. What is preventing you guys from dying or committing suicide to see your maker if you guys want to see your maker anyway in the afterlife compared to this life? For example, with Muslim extremists, they blow themselves up to keep them calm to see their maker. And also with Christians, they look forward to seeing Jesus Christ and the afterlife and they constantly talk about how to go to heaven for being a good person. So essentially, they're wishing to die to see their maker and not really trying to appreciate the life that they have. Of course, not all Christians, not all Muslims, but still, by having a belief in the afterlife, essentially people tend to focus on dying more than trying to live the life to the fullest. Anyway, that's my little response to Dennis Prager. I hope I came across as respectful. And if you guys like what you saw, please tell me down below. Until next time, you guys, uh, take care.